Here it is. We promised that we'd do this video if we got to a certain amount of likes. School carnival memories. Now because there is too much to cover in just one video, we are turning this into a series. Athletics and swimming carnivals. Maybe even cross country, who knows? But we're starting with the athletics carnivals because that is a microcosm of primary school. Needless competition, being really hot all the time, eating yogurt that has gone off in the sun. And who could forget crying about losing your Digibon? All right, let's start. Now, as promised in the previous installment of this series, we are going to answer the question as to why the well-to-do Christian kid was exceptionally good at athletics. And I think the answer is their parents were actually supportive of them and loved them. Super supportive, despite the fact that even if it was one of those events where you had to run around the oval twice, he would overlap you like it was Mario Kart. Jogging past on the way, saying something supportive like, you're almost at the halfway point, Matt. But anyway, my hat goes off to you, overly Christian kid in year six, as I am sure that you have a quite well-paid job at Sunshine Coast University, where you are doing admin. My second favorite thing to do after running is organizing. That stocky 50-year-old teacher, who remembers her saying at the beginning of Athletics Carnival, uh, blue hat. House. Blue house. Okay, now, Kevin, first warning. Who wants to do the announcement? Anyone? You get five points for your house if you do the announcement. Five points for every volunteer. Kevin, stand over here. And do you remember, no one taking that offer. Even the purest Melvin in the entire school because he knew that he would get half an apple pegged at him. Who remembers the school bully always in year five talking about how he does weights and that'll somehow transfer into him being a faster runner, finishing fourth out of eight with this face. I understand when you have that heavy blood rushing feel at the top of your throat, you do feel like spitting, but that guy was making a show of it. You don't need to spit that much. Okay, like the video if you were the kid that was in that two kilometer run that was so far behind the rest of the kids that the teachers started whispering to each other if they should end the race. And as soon as you finished, there was the most patronizing clap that spattered across all the houses, despite their vitriolic hatred for one another. Just. Yeah, good on you, Morgan. If there's one feeling that is worse than a piece of fruit being pegged at you at one of those events, it's receiving that clap. Just for the record, that wasn't me and running. Swimming, on the other hand. Help, I'm drowning. Swim to the side. I'm drowning. No, just a little to the left. That's it. <laughs> now, I think due to the iron laws of arithmetic, most of you will relate to this scenario. Do you remember coming about mid-pack, six to fourth? and thinking, oh man, that's it, I'm getting a silver medal next year, I'm gonna go home, start training every day. Go look up YouTubeGrade.com because the closest thing to a personal trainer you have been exposed to as a kid of year four is... It said, Step one, start your day with Nutri-Grade. Mum, is there any Nutri-Grade? No. Well, get some! Step two, get your mum to get Nutri-Grade poppers for recess. And some Nutri-Grade poppers! Step three, put three tennis balls outside and run around them. Oh, fuck, I've only got one. Step four, do five push-ups. That's gonna have to be a lead-up goal. I can only do two. And how many times did you do that fitness regime? Once. That is the closest thing that kids in year four have to a strict workout routine before they remember they have a Nintendo. Why bother? Now, if you were the fat kid at primary school, first off, brutal 364 days of the year. That one day though, everyone comes sucking up to Tub Tub, don't they? Because they want him to be the anchor in the tug of war at the end between the houses. <laughs> Oi, Charlie, get at the back. I oh, know, I oh, know, shut up. And your team won, and you had that chubby kid satisfied smirk of at the end, because you know it was all you. And that wasn't his only victory. He used the SpongeBob SquarePants narrator voice three hours before. Obliterating shot put. All the little skinny wiry kids. Oh, my toes. But Charlie, pegging it so far with that self-satisfied groan. <clears throat> Ford Fiesta! Discus, of course, being inseparable in the mind of a primary school kid to shot put using the exact same technique. Only a third of the kids getting that you're supposed to throw it like this. Most of them. Uh, you're supposed to throw it like a frisbee. Fuck off, I've got a different technique. 
Charlie, with that technique, still smashes discus. Now, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't comment on the house hierarchy, which in most schools was just the colours because we're all too dumb to know any names apart from blue. And it went in every school, blue at the top, yellow, just like in Harry Potter, dead last. The real competition each year was who would get second place, red or green. The only reason blue won is because there was two kids that always used to make it to state and just by random chance they would be allotted into that house. Yellow would be trying desperately not to be last and still green would comfortably beat them. You know what Matt and I figured out? You know how the new kid was always put in yellow? That's because there was helicopter parents saying to the teachers, my kid is not being in the lowest half. You are putting him in blue or red at a minimum. And so they would unsuspectingly put the new kid, even though it was hard enough to make friends, in the shittest house. Ah, oh, Jessica got put in the piss house, sucked in. The overly Christian kid in blue house, so he was in the position to be charitable, saying, Oh, yellow's not that bad, they won once. Remember that, was it like year one? It was the day of each year that really tested BFFs. It was our civil war, it's just that it was forgotten instantly after as no one remembered that they were part of a house, except for on that one day and that one meeting a week before where that butch teacher gets up and says okay Kevin first warning athletics carnival is on Thursday next week if you haven't put in your permission slips do so now now as you know it is not a competition it is about fitness having said that Let's smash Blue House this year! And your best friend was always in the questionably second best house while you were in the questionably third best house, losing by, what, 10 points max? He would be sitting there, sucking on a cyclone, jeering at you. Oh, dude, you're in greenhouse. You suck, dude. At some point of the jeer fest, around the four hour mark, you'd spear tackle him. Oh, get off me, you psycho! If a teacher saw you that didn't belong to your house? Cameron, disqualified. That is a shame, mate. You're really good at running too. If it was your house leader? Cameron, save that aggression for long jump. One of the heads of house, usually red, being overly enthusiastic, trying to get chants starting, but none of the kids responding. Right, when I say, here we go, red house, here we go, you respond with, who, who? You ready? Guys. All right, I'm starting. Here we go, red house, here we go. Now remember, you say, ooh, ooh. Just a big fan of sports, wanted to be an umpire, wasn't good enough, and so he takes up the AFL after school team every year. His only piece of advice ever being, all right, boys, gather in, gather in. Does everyone have an orange? Drew? Drew doesn't have an orange. Someone get him one. Uh, boys, got to say, pretty good first half. You're only trailing by 12 points. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. You've got to keep the pressure on him, okay? Max? Where's Max? Max is doing a great job of keeping the pressure on. The only teacher to turn up to the reunion. Everyone's stoked. Oh, Mr. Simons is here, legend. Still wearing the same shirt from Lowe's. Yep, wouldn't miss this one for the world, boys. You're my favorite year group. Yeah, you probably say that to all the years, sir. No, no, the year below you, they were shocking. Oi, where's Max? Oh, dude, he bought a Jim's mowing franchise. He's set. Yeah, I knew he'd come good. Well, if your version of Mr. Simons or Miss Angus was your favorite teacher, make sure you give a like. And if you want to see another installment of this, remember this shit that promised you. And if you want to see the next installment, 22,000 likes minimum. I've done everything I can. Ball's in your court now. Kevin, sit up here. Please share and comment below. Come in.